Hi, in today's video we will talk about robotic process automation and I'm using a tool called UiPath Studio Community Edition. So this is a free tool which you can use. Let's get started. I'm clicking on the button here, run button, and it's going to do some actions. It's going to browse to a website, go to the link, click it, give a dynamic name to the file, for example with date and timestamp, and then save it in your folder. You can see that the data has been saved with the date, time, stamp on that. So if I run this process again, you would see that I've got a new file now. And then at the end of the video, we will also see how we can run this process using a command line. So let's get started. So this application is UiPath Studio Community Edition, and I'm going to start with a new sequence. So sequence is a step of processes which we use to, 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 to take actions. So let me call it as a demo sequence a demo sequence which is blank at the moment so the first thing which we want to do is to go to a browser so if i search in the activities i can see something called use application browser so i drag this onto my system now it's asking me to indicate application to automate now i have the choice to start it from scratch or you can also use your previously created command for example I could go and drop a previously created uh, command from my um, previous projects also. But in this case, we're going to create a new one. So I'm going to open a Chrome window and say, and I'm going to use this website information and put it in our browse URL. So I'm going to click on the plus sign, open in advanced editor, and within the quotes, I'm going to give the name of the, or the URL of the website and say, okay. So let's see if it's going to do anything. I'm just going to run this. We should get a browser open, go to the website, and that's it. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, we need to click on some buttons now. So we would go and drag some click event, and I want to use the application click. I'll drag this application click here. And now I need to indicate the target on the screen. So let me open the browser again now. I want to click on the data download button and say OK you would see that it has given us this menu. So click on the confirm by clicking on the mouse button. So I'm confirming it now. So you can see that it has added an, an event, which is a click event, and it's going to go to the data download button and click on it. So if I run both these things together, it will open the website, it will click on the download. Now the next step for us would be to click on this link and I'll have to do another click event now and say, I want to click on this button. And again, we have the little menu there. You just say confirm. So it's a two-step process now. It's going to open a URL, which we have given. Then it's going to go and click on the data download button. Once it clicks on that, it's going to click on the actual file. And now the next step would be to download the file. Make sure in your settings on in Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using. Normally, when you click on a download link, it automatically goes to your download folder. This is not what we want for this example. So that's why I've switched it on. So every time we download a file, it's going to ask for the location. Now, in order to get the data, because every time we save the file, it's going to be saved with a name. So let's make that name a bit dynamic. So I'll be using something called assign. Now, assign is a simple way of assigning an existing variable to a new value. So let's go and create a variable first. That's an important step. If you don't do that, it might not work. So I'm saying s file name. And this is a variable of type string. That's all. That's all you've got to do in this. So now we can use this as file name and I say s file name is going to be, so I'm going to enter a VB a visual basic expression here. And all we're saying is that we're telling it that in my E drive, in the downloaded data folder, I want to create a file called data file. And then I want to put an underscore. And then I want to put a date and time in the format of year month, date, hours, and minutes, and second. And then at the end of the file, it will have .csv at the end. So go further. And we need to So if I go there and if I click on it, it's bringing up this. 
is bringing up this pop-up where you can find the file where you want to save it. So let's let's give it. So when we click on so when we click on the link, it opens this box, and then it's asking you to give a file name. So instead of the normal file name which it has, we want to give it a dynamic name. So let's go back to our sequence and say, I want to type something. So it's type into, and this is application type into. So I'm just dragging it up there. So I'm saying, I want to indicate on the target. And this is our target because we want to type it in this box. And I'm going to again confirm. So now it knows that we're going to type into this box. Now, what is the text which we want to? We can actually give abc.csv here if, if you want, but every time we run this sequence, the file name should be always abc. But that's not what we want. We want to use a dynamic file name. So remember, we created um, a variable called sfilename, and then we also assigned this variable to this folder and date and time sequence. So let's use this sfilename. And let's see if it's this is available. Yes, it is available. If it's not available to you, that means you have done something wrong. Maybe you haven't created your variable first, and then maybe you haven't done the assignment properly. So I'm using S file name. So it looks happy. And with that, the next step would be because we have given the file name, we also have to click on the save button. So let's go and add another click event. So I'm going to use a click event now and again indicate target on the screen. Go back there and then we have to be pressing the save button now. So when we click on the save button, again we have to confirm it. Confirmed. So now this looks like a proper sequence to us now. So you can see that it's starting from opening the browser first, giving a proper URL where you want to go to start with and then click on the data download button or URL on the screen. And then next, indicate the file name which we want to pick by clicking on that link and then assigning a variable name which, which has a proper, uh, proper formatted date and time stamp in, in the file name. And then we type the name of the file automatically and then we say click on the save button and that should do the job so let's let's get started and if i run it now it's going to click on the link type out the value date and timestamp on the on the file name you noticed and that's it And we can see that the file has been saved. Let's, let's delete all the files and I'm going to run this step again. When you're running this process, don't move your cursors or don't click on anything. So it's starting the process, opening the browser, clicking on the data download, clicking on the file, typing out the file name, and then clicking on the save button. And here we go, we have our data file there. We can open it up. And it looks like a proper data. And now, as we promised, how can we run this unattended? We can actually create a batch file or a .bat file in Windows and run this event. So to run this using the command prompt, we have to locate your application. For example, in my case, it's sitting in this folder and then a robot is needed. So this is a robot which we want to use. It's called UI robot. Make sure that you locate this file in your file structure and take this path. And then in the notepad, type the path there. And in the notepad, and in the notepad, type the path and also put the UI robot.exe. So this is a full path to this UI robot.exe. So this is going to get executed 
but what we want to do is we are telling it we want to run a file and what file let's find out the file name first So file name is this demo sequence. So wherever you have saved your demo sequence, so for example, in my case, this is sitting in this folder and it's called demo sequence. So this looks like a proper bat file. So this is the executable file which we want to run and we're telling it that we want to run this file. So the file is the demo sequence.xaml file which we just created by giving this um, sequence and this file is sitting in my e sidebar items documents ui path and so and make sure that you give this in quotes so the quotes have to be there so save this as save as and call it as download files.bat for batch file download files.bat so I've given this name to that now I can close the UI path so I'm going to close it so it's gone from my system so now let's concentrate on this batch file which we created and let me again edit it for you to see what we did so this was our batch file the actual path to the UI robot and we're telling that we want to run a file and this is the file the demo sequence.xaml which we just created so if i run it it's running this application it's opening up the browser clicking on the links typing out the file name and saving it and you have another file and let me run it up again Again, it's running this file, clicking on the links, typing the file name, and then saving it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found this information useful, and I'll see you in the next one.